to another episode of Resiliency Gardening. As always, I'm Corey Ekman, your homesteading graduate assistant at SRU's McCoskey Center. And today's episode, I want to talk to you about mindful gardening. And mindful gardening takes a little bit of planning as well as some motivation to get you out into your garden space. But all these ideas I'm going to give to you is supposed to make it easier for you to get out there and less taxing, both on your mind and your body. So grab your favorite cup of tea and let's get rocking. Mindful gardening really comes down to the before planning and placement of your garden, and this has a ton of layers to it. I want you to take notice specifically here of the McCoskey Center's learning garden. The placement of the garden was strategically placed near the back door of the McCoskey Center, and to the left in this photo we have our spring house, which is home to the common gardening tools in which you would use to work in your garden. And what you can't see in this photo is a big comfrey tea watering tank that would be located a little further to the left. So I want to take the next few minutes and describe to you why garden placement is so important for mindful gardening. A key garden placement takes into account a few things that incorporate both your plants needs and your needs. And this first one here is water source. So I have a little background story in which do as I say, not as I do. Um, I had a garden at an old apartment of mine in which I had the placement all off and I happened to have such a huge yard and I placed my garden so far away from the water source it wasn't even funny. I had two hoses hooked up at that time to a spigot and the basement is how we had to run it out of our house and so you would have to unwind two hoses and then re-ravel them at least once a day and let me tell you how discouraging that was. So do not be like me. Uh, make sure that you have a hose or a rain barrel near where your garden beds are, therefore to make watering feel less like a chore and more like a time that you get to know your plants better. This next garden placement technique has to do with sun or shade. And so when I say that, is it's really going to depend on what you're growing this season. And so if you have tomatoes, they're going to love the sun and you want to have a garden bed that is mostly in the sun during the day. Whereas if you have like kale or leafy greens, they will start to wilt or get too thirsty in that intense summer sun. So make sure that you choose a spot that is going to depend on what you're growing if you can. This garden placement idea goes out to everybody in Western Pennsylvania that has ever used a push mower on the side of a hill and dreaded every moment of it. So this one can be a little bit harder to accomplish, but the McCoskey Center has been able to deal with the slope within our garden areas by using raised beds that contain the soil so it doesn't erode downhill during a heavy rainfall. And you may not have thought much about the slope in your yard, but you'd be surprised at how much soil you could be losing if you don't have a way of containing that soil into your garden beds. The main takeaway here is to place your garden beds along those contour lines so they're in line with it rather than fighting against it, and it's just going to save you a lot of trouble here. Now I love this simple idea of placing your garden beds near a, a central walkway in which you're always going to pass by almost every day. So if you have a walkway that leads to your cars or something, you can allow a few minutes a day on your walk to your car to maybe pick out a few weeds or, you know, trellis up those tomatoes that are falling over. You don't want to be like me with my water example in which I placed my garden bed way too far away for the water, but as well as it was out of sight and out of mind. So I allowed my garden to get way too wild and then come the weekends, I'd have to spend like my whole Saturday just maintenancing my garden. Whereas if I just took a few minutes a day, I would have been much better off. My last garden placement idea would be to have your garden be near a compost bin of some kind or near a work shed. When it's near a compost bin, you'll be able to utilize any of that soil that you have as needed or be able to toss any of those plants that aren't looking too hot into your compost. And if you have it near a work shed, you know, having your tools at hand is another way to be active in your garden. We all go through those waves of motivation to a mindset of discouragement that can really throw a wrench into the practice. When we have the right tools and the correct placement, we can make our lives so much easier in the garden space and it doesn't have to be all that draining. In this section, I want to go over a few options in which you could utilize to make gardening be less physically demanding or even less mentally straining. I think there is a common thought, especially among those who have never gardened before, that gardening is just too hard of work and isn't worth it. And I'm here to say that yes, it is a ton of work, but it doesn't have to take that sort of toll on your well-being if you practice some of the examples I have for you. 
After all, this is a resiliency gardening series, and we are constantly facing challenges in which, with the right tools, we can adapt to them. In order to make gardening less physically demanding on your body, it's important to take the correct stance while you're gardening. And here I'm going to demonstrate how this looks. In this type of stance, you want to take your legs wide, and then you want to bend at your hips rather than at your knees, and keep a flat back. And this is important so then you can get the leverage to pull out any weeds or move around plants as needed. Overall, if you practice this stance as often as it makes sense to, you're gonna have better mobility and you'll have full coverage of being able to reach a lot of things and it'll just be less straining on your body. Another way in which you can mindfully garden is by having a practice that allows you to later move in your garden better. And so yoga is a great example. And for those of you that practice yoga, I have been to plenty of classes uh, that were slow and meditative, such as a vinyasa flow, and then to those high intensity ones of like ashtanga. And so I encourage you to find a practice that suits your body's and mind's needs both in order to feel relief in your muscles and your thoughts. By practicing yoga for me, I can find a routine that gives me a little bit more of a kick of that physical mobility and allows me to stay in the moment while I'm gardening rather than drift off and think about other things that need done in this short 24 hours of a day. So breathe and let yourself feel part of the process, not just fast forwarding to the end goal of harvesting those veggies. My favorite option to get me motivated to get outside in my garden space is actually to take my dog for a walk. And I know that sounds crazy, but she reminds me I need to get outside for the day. And you know, by me getting outside, I'm able to pay attention to those seasonal changes occurring around me that I otherwise wouldn't feel so much by staying inside all day. So if you're able to, I encourage you to take a walk for the day and you know, pay attention to the temperature from yesterday to today, or you know, notice those flowers that weren't blooming before but now, or maybe even peek over to your neighbor's garden and see how far along their garden is compared to yours. There is no shame if you need remotivated to get back into your garden space and, and handle on some of those projects that you need done. So by taking a walk, you're able to get your legs stretched out and even your chest expands fully so you're ready to take on that garden project for the day. Today's final thought comes from Alfred Austin and they say, the glory of gardening, hands in the dirt, head in the sun, heart with nature. To nurture a garden is to feed not just the body, but the soul. And so with that being said, I hope that you have found some helpful tips or examples along with this video. Let me know if you try any of them. I hope that you find a practice that helps you get into your garden space a little bit more fully with less pain, both physically and mentally. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email or uh, subscribe and, and to this video and like any of our social media pages on the next slide. So enjoy your week. Thank you for watching. I have worked upon the hillsides Where the pines sing in the wind Where the ranchers live before me And the miners before them